Welcome everybody. We are going over the Diablo 4 and some of my opinions now that I've been playing. And it's almost like, I guess it's a week and a half or so since the early access launch. And about a week or so the game has been out. And I've been hearing a bunch of questions and hearing a lot of people's feedback. And I kind of feel similar about this subject. And I wrote this thing down basically it is why am i bored of diablo 4 already now if you're not bored of diablo 4 already that's great that's good so maybe you haven't played enough yet the game only came out a, a week ago maybe you're still like going through the campaign and all that stuff but these are some of the opinions that i have now that i have a level 100 i have level like 70 something druid i uh, played the game a bunch of times um, I have some lower level characters as well, and I've talked and watched a lot of other content as well. So, and then the other one is, it's not so much a question, but more of a statement, and I feel this, I relate to this one as well. And it's, I have a hard time convincing myself going back to play Diablo 4. And I think here are some of the things, in my opinion, that are contributing to to these feelings and again if you're not feeling this this is fine but it would be interesting to hear if you want to add to this list um some things that were things that maybe you could come up with for a solution on how to solve like some of these problems or maybe some things that i missed on this list which i wouldn't be surprised like why did you if you relate to the statement of why you're bored or you're having a hard time convincing yourself to playing let me know in the comments what you guys are uh, like struggling with. What is the last thing you did? Like before you logged in and you were like, eh, man, before you had one of these thoughts, you know what I mean? So let's get into it. Trading. Trading. There is pretty much next to no trading. Um, yes, you can trade rares, but in Diablo 2, you could trade everything. In Diablo 3, you could trade nothing but at least you could trade it within your group um for a few hours you know so if your friend had something that he needed you could give it to him and um or if you had friend something for your friend you could give it to him and then move on and like trade a little bit like that and that was at least helpful but trading rares very few people know what stats to look for in the first place it's not a very intuitive trading system and it's sifting through item after item after item. Um, it's just hardly any trading. Like the real ticket items, you can't even trade. So I feel like there's a little bit lacking there. And that's just gold for currency. Okay, you gotta have a currency, I get it. But it would be nice to see more in that department. So I don't think there's a whole lot of dopamine that you're getting from trading. Leveling experience... Um, from what I've seen and what I've felt and what I've heard, um, the leveling experience at the beginning, like the first half or so, is like a little bit slow just trying to progress through the game. And then for me, now that I've been 100 for like a week or so, once you hit 100, then there's nothing. It's just a hard stop. There's no more... Uh, there's no more experience. Monsters are useless to me, really. Like, the trash mobs. So, I just don't really care. You just kind of skip them. You go through the next nightmare dungeon as fast as possible. It doesn't really matter. Like, in Diablo 2, you're pretty much not going to hit max level. I guess maybe with the new Terror Zones you would. But if you're playing a mod or something without the Terror Zones or my mod, then, yeah, sure. Uh, you're going to keep leveling. Experience means something. Diablo 3... You have Paragon. You're always getting experience. It's not necessarily the best system, but at least you're getting something when you're killing monsters. This one, you hit 100, that's it. Um, itemization. We kind of boiled this down. Compared to Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, there's fewer categories of items and things to do with them. So... For example, in Diablo 2, you could actually use magic items, which were potentially best in slot. It was super rare for that to happen, but that was it. Uh, or, but, 
or not that was it, but in Diablo 4, you don't have that. You know, you don't have things like that. In modded Diablo 2, you had like corruptions. In Diablo 3, you even had augments. There's not a whole lot you can do with your items as they are. So as soon as you find the item that you need, then that's it. You're done, right? Um, there's also, I didn't really bring this up when discussing it before, but I also think that there's an issue with, you lose a little bit of item identity when you have base item, sacred item, and ancestral item. Now, if you're not familiar with those mean, it's basically each difficulty, and depending on your world tier, there's, you know, legendaries. Let's see if we can, like, find some, right? It says ancestral unique pants. Uh, ancestral unique gloves, right? And the, at the very beginning here, at the very start of the word. Or, or of unique chest. This is, like, the highest tier. Now, I could get these exact same, this exact same item, such as Rage of Haragoth, sacred unique chest, which is a lower tier item, but it's the same exact thing, and it just has lower stats. And then there's also a base version that's even lower than that, which is just unique chest, Rage of Haragoth. And I think in Diablo 2, um, I think they did a really good job with... Now, I think, I think this is designed for simplification. Um, but I think you lose item identity and you lose different stages of progress is what it feels. It doesn't feel as dopaminergic, I feel like. Um, compared to Diablo 2, where it's like you get your... Uh, you had even three types of items there. You have like Swirling Crystal, which is like a tier 2 item. And then... Uh, Three, like tier three would be dimensional shard, you know, but the difference between those items is like Oculus versus Death's Fathom. You know, you're kind of moving into the end game gear. So rather than just having the same item in different tiers, there were legitimately different items. And some of those items like War Travs or Mage Fist or Chance Guards in Diablo 2, that you would even use on your end game character. So it's like in this, if I was still using a sacred item, which I am, or a base item, it's kind of similar-ish to that. So, similar-ish. But the point is, I think rather than just copy-pasting having three different versions of each item, I think it would have been cool to have more identity with them. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just you lose a little bit of identity, I feel like, with each item. And of, of course, I I will say that I, dil, I still do rate Diablo 4 as like an 8.3 overall. I do as as the current day. Um, I just think that a lot of these things will be resolved with more seasons and more content. However, my rating will drastically go down very quickly if they do not address some of the things that I'm bringing up today. So... Going back to itemization, fewer things to do, and fewer categories. There's no crafted, there's no sets, you get it. So, then quality of life. Now this thing we could go on forever, but basically the stash is a little bit lackluster. You have five different classes, and nobody has a personal stash. Hopefully you'll be able to have more stash tabs soon. Maybe buy them, I don't know. But like, there's not enough stash space for the amount of things and items that you need to be able to try all the builds that you want to try. Which most of the builds are not even viable thanks to guide writers like Maxwell who have been going out and testing all these things for us so we don't have to waste our time with garbage ass builds. <laughs> so, then there's UI mechanics such as like, the skill tree, I zoom out all the way. This is me zoomed out. It takes me a few times to like scroll down to see my skill tree. And it's like, okay, well, we'll go full screen. Still takes a couple scrolls to see that. There's no like real search here. You have to go and look through this first to go and find elite monsters, right? And then it's like, okay, now I can see. There's no like typing function. 
you know, like uh, you would see on PoE or something. Same thing goes for the stash. There's no typing function. Even Diablo 3 had a typing function where you could type in ring or boots or whatever, and it would pop up in your stash in Diablo 3. So UI things like that are uh, something else I would put in quality of life. Party portals and waypoints and blacksmiths missing stashes. I gave an example of this earlier. When you're playing in a party, um, you know, you have your party portals or like your friends portals, like right here, right here, right here, right? But sometimes you have waypoints that just don't even have your friends portals there. So you went to a town or a waypoint and now you have to go to a main hub to go and visit your friends. So you have to go through a ton of loading screens and by then your friends might be even done with the dungeon when you're trying to go and, you know, play with them. So that is kind of rough. I feel like every area or every waypoint should at least have a portal. I don't see why this that's an issue. I also don't like that there's not a blacksmith or a stash at every single one. Like I was giving an example earlier was like fate. Fate's Retreat. Let's take a look at this waypoint, for example. So, obviously I could have clicked the waypoint and insta-clicked there instead of waiting for the, the loading. But, this is a very good example of what I'm talking about. It's like, I finally made it back to town, dude. And I'm, and I'm at this waypoint. Thank God we have a blacksmith. Just kidding. There's no blacksmith. Okay, well, I'll at least be able to put my loot in the stash. Nope, there's no loot. No stash loot. There's nothing here. There's, there's literally nothing here. And I'm not 100% certain on this, but I'd say like 95% chance that there are not friendly portals here either. So this is just like a checkpoint spot. Um, It's not a real town, even though I can't do that here. I can't do that here, not in town. You know, I can't do any of this stuff in town, but this is not a town, dude. This is not a town. This is just checkpoint. Which brings me into checkpoints. Uh, when you're in a dungeon and you die, or you go back to your last checkpoint, it's like, you don't know where that checkpoint's gonna be. It's gonna take you three years to walk through and go back to where you were when you died. I feel like that's your death penalty. Instead of losing experience, the penalty is the fact that you have to walk all the way through the dungeon to just get back where you were. That's rough. So, the fact that waypoints like this exist is like, hmm, a little questionable for me. So, stuff like that, I think the checkpoint system, like I said, needs a little bit of reworking. It's not, I feel like maybe two screens away is legit. Like, you know, you die, maybe two screens away, you're not in combat really with the stuff that you were just fighting, but you're not like far, far away, or like, you have to go to town to TP on your friends because it's closer and faster that way. So, yeah, stuff like that. Um, then, in order to reset your dungeon, you have to leave the dungeon. Or you have to leave game if you're playing solo. Like, say you are farming what the current meta is uh, as of this video. Which is like uh, Ruins of Eridu... And Champion's Demise, which is like right there. Okay. You have to exit the game or exit to leave uh, leave game and then go to character creation screen or character selection screen. Join back in, which, mind you, kills your elixir. Or, if you're playing in a group, you have to leave party, invite them all back, Go back into the dungeon, and so it all resets your instance, and do that, does that all that like madness, rather than just restart dungeon, go back in. It's like if we can do this, then why isn't there just a button rather than like leaving party, new instance, inviting friends back, going in, doing the dungeon again? It's like, man, it's a little bit, it's lacking some quality of life there. So, then the horse, I mean, I don't really need to say much here. I feel like a lot of people know what's up with the horse, the rubber banding, the fact that when you get knocked off or get killed, 
It takes like 30 seconds for your horse to come back. Or 10 seconds if you accidentally press the horse button. Twice, which happened to me so many times. They're just very, very restrictive with your horse. And then... No pausing in solo. Even Diablo 3 has this. If you're playing solo in Diablo 2, you have pause. You can press escape and it pauses the game. I get that it's an MMO, but let's say you're in a dungeon. There's nobody there if you're playing solo. Why can't you just pause? I did it on Diablo 3. Uh, camera zoom. So, I've, a lot of people said that the camera zoom is a little bit too close. You can't really zoom out. You can zoom in, which I have unbound right now, by the way. Quick tip. You can actually go into your options, uh, controls, and uncheck. If you, like, force move on your mouse wheel, you can uncheck this zoom on mouse wheel button, which uh, I removed. And then you can put force move on your middle mouse. So it's like if I scroll forward, I move. Scroll backward, I move. Very nice. If you don't care, you don't care. But just a little quick tip there. Um, so yeah, the camera feels a little zoomed in. You can't really see a whole lot of stuff. It's nice when you're fighting a world boss or something. Um, which is a whole nother subject about the uh scattered prisms and how the exclusivity is gone but that's that's a whole other thing i don't want to get into that um and then not enough carries over for your second character or your alts and i know for sure that the season pass and the things that you pay for are going to boost up your character experience um for your secondary characters right your alts but you know the fact that i I hit 100, I have all the map discovered and everything, and then I go to my alt and I see nothing and I have no waypoints or anything. I have the horse, but that's it. And that's a lot of a lot of time that goes into discovering all these zones, as I'm sure you guys know. Um, at least you get the reputation secondary bonus for your friends, or for your alts, but like, you do have to do the top. I don't know, not a huge big deal with that one. I guess it's fine that you can earn secondary renown points or something. Or a bonus XP and gold and all that, but... Minor nitpick there is just... I feel like my account should complete this, not just a character uh, for the season. Just my opinion on that one. Then we have monsters. I feel like... Um, with the current way that we play... There's a little bit of a lack of variety and personality. And what I mean by that is... Um, in Diablo 2, personality, like you have... You know all the monsters by name, right? Like the souls, the dolls, uh, the pit lords, the stranglers. Like you can imagine those things if you play Diablo 2. You can imagine by the, the words that I just said, the names of the monsters. It's like, I know what that is. We have been playing that game for a much longer time. But it's like... I really know what that is. And then... So I feel like they did a decent job with that. In Diablo 3... I feel like everything is just kind of a damage sponge. And I feel like Diablo 4 is kind of in the middle between those two. So I don't think it's like... Um, I don't think monsters have a huge amount of variety. Uh, or amount of personality. But they look amazing. They do... They are, like, very scary at times, and, you know, they sound cool, but that's going into, like, visuals and cosmetics of, of the game and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, I don't I don't feel like, with the war current way, the way that we play, if we're doing Champions of the Minds, we're not getting a variety of monsters. It's even less variety than a Greater Rift in Diablo 3 to actually play the meta currently. Not that you have to. Right, you don't have to play the meta. You don't have to do that. But for the people like me that really likes to play that way and does not want to play any other way, I'm only getting the same maps every single time. Champions demise, same monsters, goats and spiders, every single time. When I play Diablo three, I'm getting a different role on the map every single time, different role with the monsters every single time. All I have to do is just keep pressing the button and keep going in. That's all I gotta do. So, um. That's what I mean by lax variety. Will this stay? Who knows? Um, 
getting from place to place. Uh, this is kind of going down and skipping to attention. It takes a little bit extra time. When you're playing a Diablo game like Diablo 2, you can go and teleport to one place or another place. Um, the Sorceress, save and exit. Go back to that place, farm that place every 30 seconds or something. You know, another bail run takes 30 seconds to get back in the throne room. Diablo 2 or Diablo 3, you know, 30 seconds max in town if you really want to play that hard uh, and keep your attention up. You can go right into the next greater rift. Right into the next regular rift. Whatever it is. It's like 30 seconds max in town if you want to play that. So if it's there, it'll give it to you. In this game, you have to either do, like I said, save and exit. Which is kind of like D2 in some way. Uh, lose your elixir. Then go back into the dungeon and do it again. Or, you have to click your nightmare dungeon, right? And hope it's somewhere close. Right, I mean, I guess you can recognize the name and what the area is and all that stuff. But um, after you finish all of those dungeons in that area, then you have to go to the next one. And there's no like instant gratification of going through. It's like, okay, now I have to find the closest waypoint. Uh, for example, we'll just like burn one of these, right? So if I'm going to go and do one of these, it's like, okay, this is where it is. This is where I'm located now. There's not like, okay, I'm going to go in and go to the waypoint and like click it. And go there. Or like click the obelisk in Diablo 3 and go right in. It's like, okay, now I have to go into my map. And I have to go to this waypoint. And I have to travel on my horse. Which could have its own problems traveling on your horse. To go into this dungeon and go clear the dungeon. Then after that dungeon's done, then you go in and click another one. And it's like, well, after you run out of that one. It's like, now I have to go way up here. I have to navigate with my horse. So that's what I'm saying about attention span. So if you have a short attention span like me, and I'd say a lot of people, because TikTok and YouTube shorts and all these different things, Instagram reels, pretty popular right now. Um, it's taking too much time between uh, each each thing. So, And then as far as combat goes, going backwards a little bit here, I think combat's a wait and see. I, don't, I think the game game's combat has a decent amount of variety, there needs to be some balance changes. Um, combat with your group. Uh, like Diablo 3, I feel like there were actually like zero DPS builds that really were support builds that helped your friends out. And that was really fun for those that liked that. And then in Diablo 2, you know, they didn't really have... Um, I, I feel like Diablo 2's combat was kind of all right. It's not like greatest. It's like, you know, elite hunting or boss hunting or just trash killing and that's about it diablo 3 it's like okay you go speed farming you can do bounties not fun nobody's doing bounties unless you have to um you could do boss farming again i guess or you could do greater rifts or you could push greater rifts you could go faster you could go slower you could you know there's a lot of different things goblins all those different things but i think the real combat uh systems were uh, Diablo 3, like, late game when you're really trying to push prior to the last season that just came out, like, where everything was super strong. Where it's like, I want to play with my team, and you have to time everything right, and the combat was very interesting. You have to time your cooldowns with your friend's convention of uh, elements cycle and communicate that stuff. You know, combat was very interesting and very involved if you really wanted to push Otherwise, you had the option to just blast through everything in a lower greater rift tier and all that. But um, <clears throat> drinking water because my voice is about to kill itself. Yeah, things like Z barb and all that. Okay, then we have PvP. As I said here, I kind of like the PvP. And again, I think it's like a wait and see type of thing where it's like, let's see how this all plays out. And I think the reason why I said wait and see on the combat is because right now there is no incentive, in my opinion, to push higher, greater rifts. Well, I call it greater rifts, but it's dungeons. There's no reason to do another a higher tier, right? There's no leaderboards, which is another thing that ties in here. Um, to give an incentive like, hey, this is the highest tier that people have hit. This is the class. You know, Diablo 3 had this. Diablo 2 had 
you know, level 99. First level 99 it shows you on the leaderboards. Uh, so no leaderboards. We'll have to see how it goes. I think, again, I'll say this one more time. A lot of these issues can be resolved with additional content and them addressing the community. So, again, these are just my thoughts. So, I like the PvP, and I want to see how it all goes. Maybe it'll be group PvP setting up. Maybe it'll be like... Maybe it'll be interesting, or it'll maybe it'll just be like as it is now, or just hunt. I don't know. Depends on like builds and all these different things that people come up with. Social... It feels good with friends usually like you know um you're playing when you're playing with your friend or your friends i feel like the game does feel better than when you're playing solo and then for solo to me it feels a little bit boring uh there's also no single player option and again going back to the fact that there is no pausing you know that kind of sucks a little bit uh then visuals looks fantastic there's a couple things i like in d2r better um but i think diablo 4 looks fan fantastic it's very dark the story's good and that's pretty much uh we gotta say but i think overall answering the question i think it's these it's not addressing some of the dopamine dude because that's why we play that's what gets you addicted it's the dopamine uh, that you get. You can't really trade. So when you're playing the game past 100. Um, you can't really trade. So there's no like. There's no way you can like gear for your alts. Not enough carries over. There's also like the level requirement on an item that you drop. So it's like if you drop a rare. It's all required 100. So you have to be trading only with someone who's 100. Um. You can't even, even if you find like a decent rare that has like a lot of like generalized stats. It's like, well, I can't give that to my lower level character because required level 100. You know, stuff like that. So, again, I rate the game 8.3. But it, again, it will go down if they do not address some of these things. And I'm hoping that season 1 will have huge, huge... um progress in, the, in this department so anyways that's a lot we talked a lot about uh diablo 4 and i hope that some of you guys can at least share your thoughts on on these uh subjects because i've kind of just been sporadically saying this stuff throughout the week because i've been playing you know minecraft for fun and uh you know some diablo 2 some of my mod and then just like hanging out in streams and, and stuff and people ask questions and all that. So I just like, all right, let's make a video. So this is it. Hope you enjoyed. Much love. You're all beasts.